Hi, this is Rafiq Suleiman, and you are watching Cloud Simplified. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another lesson from the Cloud Practitioner Express. And in this lesson, we'll be explaining what are my region selection criteria. We're going to see AWS has multiple regions. And now I need to choose one of these regions to deploy my infrastructure on. So the question, how many regions do I have? What's the updated number that I currently have? And the best way to answer this question is to go to the AWS Global Infrastructure website to answer that question and to know what's the updated number of regions that we currently have. Let's see. Very good. Now let's go and understand how do I get, where is the latest update about the number of regions and AZs that we have. The best way is to go to Google and check for the AWS Global Infrastructure. And then this is the first link here. I click on this first link and now this is what I can understand. So the latest number that we currently have as the time I'm recording this video is AWS has 31 regions and 99 availability zones. So by doing very quick math of one region has a minimum of three AZs. So you can understand 31 multiplied by three, I will get 93. So this means that we have other regions that they have more than just three availability zones. Where are these regions? Let's go and check. So if you went like this here, this is a map of all the regions AWS has. And in green, these are the up and running regions where you can go and put your infrastructure on today. And the red ones are the regions that they are coming soon. And as you can see, we have five more AWS regions coming soon in Canada, in Israel, in Malaysia, New Zealand, and in Thailand. So for example, let me go and check this region. And this is, as I mentioned, this is US East one. And as you can see, it was launched in 2006. And if you remember, this was the first region ever to be launched. And guess what? Inside this region, we have six availability zone. This is the biggest region AWS has. And we have here inside six availability zones. But for example, other regions like this in Ohio, we have, for example, three availability zones. Another one, for example, here in Seoul, this was launched in 2016. And this one has, for example, four availability zone. So this page is very, very important. If you want to know what's the latest update related to how many regions AWS has currently, how many availability zones, and also another very important concept we're going to see just in the next lesson is what we call point of presence or what we call edge locations. Now, after seeing how can I get to know the latest number of AWS regions, let's now go through what are the criteria to choose one of the multiple regions AWS has. And the first criteria we're going to speak about is what we call compliance and data regulations. And this is very important. If you remember from the previous lesson, when we explained regions and AZs, we mentioned that by definition, a region is inside one country. And this is very, very important for what we call data residency, because some organizations, especially public sector and the government organizations, they have a mandate that their data must be inside the country. So if this is the case, you need to choose from a region inside this country. And that's the first criteria. The second one is I need to choose a region that is close to my customers. Why? In order to have very low latency and delay and in order for my customers to have a very good customer experience. So the second criterion, I want to choose a region which has proximity to my users, which is close to my users. And that's number two. Number three, and this is interesting, the availability of the services. So someone watching might say, does that mean that we don't have all services 
available in all the regions? And the answer is yes, especially for example, on the newly launched regions, you might not find that we have all the services available yet inside this region. And that's why if you are deploying your infrastructure or your design in one of the regions, please, before doing this, make sure that all the services that you have included in your design are already active inside this region. And the final criterion is the cost. So for example, if I don't mind putting my infrastructure in any of the regions, then another criterion that the cost differs from one region to another. And again, the answer is yes. The cost is not the same across all the regions. So this might be your last criterion where you need to go and check what's the cost of my services. So if you don't have the previous uh, selection criteria, maybe you will need to go and you will deploy your infrastructure on the most cost effective region, for example. And with this, we come to the end of this lesson. I hope now this is clear. How can we select from the many AWS regions that AWS has? Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.